Scala Look like a martyr to marauders like Tata Wise out slaughter, whack MCs order a plotter Original woman, decipher the womb Crown of creation, fruit of the planet, earth and the moon Peace, peace, peace. Welcome to another episode of Wise the Dome TV. Today, I have a very, very special guest, um, MC Extraordinaire. She does a lot. Um, you can see her all over the internet, man. She got a new album dropping as well. Um, Yara, appreciate you for coming through. Thanks for having me, man. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt. So let's let's get into a little bit from the beginning. Um, mm -hmm. If you can, just tell us how you... Like about your upbringing in, in, in Southern California and when you when you began to fall in love with music? Um, well, I've always loved music since I was a child, mm -hmm. definitely, um, as told by my family to me. <laughs> Obviously, I don't remember everything, mm -hmm. but I've always loved music um, since, I, since I can comprehend. My family has told me stories of just me like stealing the remote and turning it to MTV or right. just different things. Um, definitely a nineties baby. So, you know, we grew up in that thick of music video era when <laughs> those were very relevant and important and stuff and still on TV, not just YouTube. So from a young age, according to my family, I've always displayed like excess love for music. The way that I started writing I've always been a writer in general, but I started writing music through poetry. Mm. Um, and I loved attending live music shows growing up. So mm. it was one of my favorite things to do. The first concert I ever went to was like, probably like Sammy and the pack and Little <laughs> B. So <laughs> I, from that moment, that was my first concert without my family. Let mm. me say that. Mm -hmm. My first concert I remember was a Disney like on ice thing. That's yeah. my earliest like live music memory for sure. I was very young, like mm -hmm. a toddler, but I remember it. Right. That kind like, of stuff was impression on you, right? Yes, I remember <laughs> it vividly. I remember I remember what we ordered to drink. It was like <laughs> a snow cone slurpee <laughs> and the little alien head cup. Right, right. <laughs> from Toy Story on Ice. Like I remember it. I just remember being so like, I want to do that. So mm. my whole life growing up, I participated in dance team, pageants, choir. We moved around a ton. My mother um, was a single mom. There's five of us. So mm. it wasn't necessarily stable, but she taught us. She taught me the things that made me a woman today and just made me a good, like a good human being, morals yeah. and things of that nature. And always stressed the importance of education so even though it was pretty tough growing up I always had really good grades school mm. was just kind of like a thing we had to do yeah. I didn't I didn't struggle in school or anything um that much but you know life definitely was not easy and I I used to love to write everything I used to read everything things I had no business reading I was mm. reading at a college age by seven or eight years old. Wow. As as told from my school, like on some mm -hmm. like legally scholastically shit. So yeah. I've always loved words. I've yeah. always loved to perform, but later I would put those things together. And then from there, it's just been moving forward, learning to record myself, um, learning how to mix and master, writing for other people. That's the fast version. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no doubt, no doubt. <laughs> no, no, no doubt. But um, like, I hope I, I answered that. Nah, you did, you did, you did. <laughs> but I, yeah. So if you can, I obviously understand about um not uh, uh naming any specific names, but uh you have written for others, and didn't you? Did you do some writing for like Death Row? Yes. So I'm currently involved in writing for extreme and death row which is more so for the film and tv aspect of mm. death row mm -hmm. um and that's pending so i can't say too much about it right now but sure. that will reveal itself this year mm -hmm. very soon mm -hmm. um so shout out to snoop dog no <laughs> doubt no doubt lady. shout out snoop because yeah because the death row compound is ran by boss lady 
um, it's a family, you know, thing there. I know, like, in the 90s, Death mm. Row obviously had a stigma. Yeah, that's the Death Row I yeah. remember. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but nowadays, you go there, you're going to see grandbabies and musicians. Mm. And, you know, Snoop got that place, Snoop and Boss Lady. So, Dope. shout out to them because their vision allows for opportunity for us and others. So, yeah, um, our ne- when we do our next interview, mm-hmm. then... We could talk more about that, but I definitely um, have been enjoying my time there since about last summer mm-hmm. to currently, and I look forward to all the things that that's going to bring and the ways I can be an asset to them too. You yeah. know, so I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, no doubt, no doubt. That's that's big. That's big, and congrats Thank on that. You. Um, you know, obviously, as an artist. Yeah, you literally are. Every a lot of people will say this about themselves, like a multifaceted type of artist, but you really have a lot of different pockets that you can get into, whether Thank it's you. from flow, lyricism, singing, the way you can hear melodies. Uh, it comes off in like the joint. I, one of my favorite joints is uh, Backdraft. Like, like, Ooh, that's yeah. cool that you like that song. Ah, nah, that's that one right there, right? And um, and so, but you can, you can hear the. I can hear. I can see how you hear melodies and and structures, right? Like that. Like a lot of people overlook that kind of thing. Like, but so who would like some of your musical inspirations? I would say. Um, cause I know that there were MCs, but it gotta be, it gotta be, I, I, I just envision this answer being a wide range of type of artist. but you know what I'm saying? But yeah. who are some of your inspirations? <clears throat> well, like as far as artists that I listen to, mm-hmm. they inspire me, but in the sense, the context of this question, you're referring to more like the process. So just to be like, mm-hmm. like clear about where i'm coming from because there's so many people but as far as like the structure process and melodic things like that definitely bone thugs and harmony mm. definitely snoop dog definitely Aaliyah, mm. definitely Aaliyah. Right. <laughs> um definitely that whole camp missy elliott mm-hmm. um you know rest in peace static major as well definitely pharrell definitely Devonte swing i i'm definitely um on that tree mm-hmm. And then as far as like the singing and rapping goes, but when it comes to bars, I would say I look up to like Snoop because I like how Snoop doesn't raise his voice. That's something I really had to work on. Mm. Having a softer voice is my Mm. delivery. Mm -hmm. So I like to study people like Snoop, Um, people like Tweet, how Mm. she harmonizes, Um, people like Tina Marie I love Mm -hmm. and Prince, Bob Marley. Legends. Yes, these Stevie Wonder, mm-hmm. definitely Griselda. Oh yeah, yes, definitely. But see, that's Canada but that's what <laughs> see that's what I figured that it was going to be like a wide range of art, and I think that's a good thing. You know, I think sometimes when uh, when artists have a thing to where they're not really and and i'm not knocking anybody but i always i always feel like it's a plus for for artists to have a a a pretty good uh musical education as far as you know what i mean uh stuff that came before them and stuff that oh yeah you know i i think it it all it just always helps man to be able to because i mean in essence it's like you're learning from the masters right like you said you like steve Obviously, Stevie's a master at what he does. You know what I'm saying? And yes. and He's so a prodigy. exactly, exactly. You know, um, so I think that's dope. Um, we're gonna jump around a little bit, and so we might come back, we might come back here, but uh the new I single slabs featuring Paul Wall. Uh for the slabs. Yeah, for the slabs, uh featuring yes. Paul Wall. Super dope. Um, I grew up thank you. Uh I grew up on Screwed Up Click and Swisher House and all Me of that. Too. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So that's that's so dope. just to let you know too, mm-hmm. we're gonna have a screwed version. Of, I'll be say chop not slot from the yeah. OG Chop Stars coming nice. soon. So nice. I'll I'll hear that. Like that. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll definitely, definitely I'm gonna be on it. Um and, and so but you know, you've worked with well, first, congrats on that. Um Thank let you. everybody know about the new joint that's about to drop tomorrow. 
And by the time this comes out, it'll be out already. The link will be in the description for everybody to go uh, to go listen to. But go if, if you can, tell everybody okay. about the new joint. Let me bring up Exhibit A. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, I'm retarded. Okay, so, you know, 10 songs. I called it an EP because mm. I don't give a... F Am I allowed to cuss? Yeah, absolutely. I always ask that. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, nah, no, nah, we good, we good, we good. Yeah, I don't, mm. I don't give a fuck about, like, EP is four songs. EP is seven songs. They're going to continue to, you know, it's what I say it is. So my mm. EP of 10 songs, mm -hmm. and the reason I named it an EP and not an, a full-length project is because four of the songs were already out. Mm -hmm. um, and I also feel like this is more of, like, a super... I got really inspired out the blue mm -hmm. rather than like a scheduled project for yeah. myself, you know? So yeah. it's it's almost like a Valentine's Day gift for everybody. And the topic at hand is love, but it's not necessarily what people might think. It's mm -hmm. not about romantic love only. There are some more romantic songs, which I don't have a lot of love songs. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited for people to hear the love side. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, 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 <laughs> right. The R&B, you know, yeah. like singing. There's a lot of singing on it, which in the past, I mm. like bars and stuff. So um, you can expect to see a more softer side to mm -hmm. me rather than just like mad bars the whole time. The Paul Wall feature was incredibly like crafted. Um, Dion Glenn sent me the beat. Mm -hmm. I was in Cali. He was in Detroit. Mm -hmm. I went crazy. I immediately started writing to it. Mm -hmm. I wrote that song so fucking fast. Mm -hmm. And when I heard it, I said, I need an H-Town artist on this. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I told they won that. And he's mm -hmm. like, let's send it to Paul. And I'm like, Paul? Wall? Like, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, you know, he would mm -hmm. be perfect for this. But mm -hmm. obviously, his name is much bigger than mine. So let's send it and pray. And then, you mm -hmm. know, when you send a feature to a bigger person, not only do you have to wait on the yes, but you have to wait on the actual fucking verse. Mm -hmm. So it's like there's mm -hmm. levels to getting mm -hmm. a big feature to me of anxiety because right. Right, right. people be busy, right. you know, and right. they have their own schedules. Right. So like as far as um, musically, you know, mm -hmm. so but the timing was good and Paul Wall got it back to me in like a week or two wow. max. Mm -hmm. I feel like he gave me a drive slow, sitting sideways type mm -hmm. verse. He did mm -hmm. not he didn't he left no crumbs as people say mm -hmm. and he followed me back he support he's been commenting posting it and i can't wait to get to houston and finish the music video because i started it in cali in order to get our car our mm -hmm. car culture mm -hmm. but i'm gonna finish it in eight yeah, you got you, it's, if it's for the it's slabs, you, the slabs. Yeah, you, you gotta go to you, h -Town, but I right <laughs> sure to get the cali because mm -hmm. in cali we have a distinctive car culture here right. american cars and different old schools low riders so and it's a and the first half of the video is in my hometown of san Bernardino. so mm -hmm. route 66 you know that's like the first hot interstate in america type shit so mm -hmm. i definitely paid um homage to where i'm from but we gotta wrap it up in age town and no doubt and pay that homage there so yeah the love wins ep is out now you can purchase it on yamusic.bandcamp.com and it's on all streaming and shout out to paul wall for just believing in me and i might cry when i meet him I don't know. <laughs> right so, right no but that's yeah. that's dope that means that you know obviously he was inspired by the joint as well whenever he heard it he liked it you know a lot of times mm -hmm things can be just transactional and artists may be doing things just just to either you know either for money or to get there or, or just to hop on everything that they can not mm -hmm. really not really being about the music but if he heard it got it back in a week that means he, i mean he actually rocked with the joint man so that's that's dope and, yeah and uh um shout out to uh paul wall um people's champ the people's what do, baby? yeah I, I mean i remember from the color changing click days and and all of that man you know that was uh him and him and chameleon there whenever whenever they dropped their uh first group album i mean they, it just went crazy in texas mm. um but um and so uh uh your album californication was uh released under uh gold chain music 
uh, Planet Asia's mm -hmm. uh, 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 label. Um, so how did that collaboration come about? And uh, did and did and did the fact that you were dropping an album on uh, Gold Chain kind of influence the way you approached it? Did you approach it a certain way because it was coming out on this or or just kind of you, did you, you know, or was it the same process that you used uh, previously? If you can, just give us a little insight on that. Well, I wanted to add something new to the Gold Chain catalog. Mm -hmm. um, and so I wanted to do a, I want to say more pop sounding album, mm -hmm. you know, Californication and Love Winds are more of my brighter sounding albums, so to speak. Mm -hmm. A lot of my other things are more dark and, you know, there's not, there's just not a lot of singing. It's just bars because I just love hip hop. Right. But for my first, I gave Gold Chain an EP called Queen's Gambit, which was very danky and produced fully by Wavy the God. And mm. he produces for Griselda. But the funny thing is, I, me and Wavy were already working on that mm -hmm. before I ever met Planet Asia. He just happens to know them too. Mm -hmm. So, you know, mm -hmm. that's the universe. So for the yeah. full album, and that was my, that's my first and only album to this date, like as far as what I call them, mm -hmm. I wanted it to be something for the ladies and something bright and something with a little more pop hip hop mm -hmm. because I felt like I wanted to add to the catalog something different and unpredictable. So that's that was the approach with that. Um, mm -hmm. The songs are from a culmination of time. So some are very old. Some I did right then and there fast. Um, but once I hear enough songs, like I have a lot of songs recorded. And then after a while, I start hear putting it together like a puzzle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most yeah. of the time. As so, far as you're talking about, as far as the completion of the whole album, like arrangement and, and what mm -hmm. you, yeah, I got you. And then now the exception to that is if I do one full album with one full producer, which mm -hmm. I love to do that, too, mm -hmm. because the producer is kind of curating beats with me. Right. right. So because I can only choose from what they send me, but then they have to curate that before I get to them. So um versus in this EP or the Californication album, it was just like time. I had enough that told a story in the hard drive that made sense. Mm -hmm. And I was ready to present to people as well. Cause I haven't dropped since last year. Um the the uh for the homies EP around August, I think it was. So which is a dope EP as well. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. That's that's like the bars. And I also don't have a lot of features typically. So for yeah. the homies was just that I wanted to put mad of my friends on songs and mm -hmm. go crazy bar wise. So whereas this, this process for Californication and love wins was more like I've stacked a lot of records and now I'm hearing, I'm seeing a visual and I'm hearing an album, you know, mm -hmm. I'm seeing a story and then I'm hearing a story. Right, right, most definitely. Um, when it comes to even the art of storytelling, right? Like, is that something that you consciously, you know, uh, as an MC, uh, consciously, uh, you know, want to at, at times want to be able to show that you got that in your toolbox as well? Because we are kind of in an era, it feels like, where a lot of MCs don't really care about the storytelling aspect of it. Right. Well, I believe in full albums. That saying an album is dead is like saying movies are dead because music videos are popular. Mm. You know, I will always believe in full projects as if they're a good meal or a good movie. Mm -hmm. So I feel like as the actual, in the literal sense of storytelling, like a song that's a story, I think I could do a better job in that. I think that's definitely more of like a 90s slash East Coast approach mm -hmm. um, because, you know, you think about like different songs that have a character and there's a story, yeah. right? But right. for me, I focus more on the story of the album. Mm, right. So like if that happens to be a story in a literal sense, how we're saying like, you know, 
save the dolphin shooting. Dope, dope, dope. That's a story, <laughs> Meaning right? water or soap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, I'm sorry, that's... I had to finish that, though. Like... Of course. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, that's that's storytelling, right? right or, right. you know, Brendan, mm. baby. I don't, I, I think that that's a place I could get stronger in as far mm-hmm. as rapping. Mm-hmm. But I have a full story in the full Album. thing going on in every single EP and body yeah. of work. That like, makes that, that is important. Yeah, that makes it an experience. Um, yes, as, and you know, I think that's what makes. I think that adds to the replay value of an album, right? Um, I think yes. that's why people like like Kendrick. You know, like yes. his, his it's. It's, yep. it, it's not going to be the same experience each time, but it's going to be no. an experience. It's a movie. Right. It's an audible movie. And I love skits, transition, mm. sequencing, picking my skits, making my skits, collecting skits from movies and shows, and then eventually putting up, seeing what fits where. And, and I might hear a skit that clicks the whole project because i'm a big movie person mm-hmm. so kendrick knows how to put an album together somebody like a kanye is gonna have a theme mm-hmm. all my albums have a complete story and then there's a story within the story so hmm. californication is just different experiences of people who came to la or cali to follow their dreams but the total story is that this can apply to anybody who goes somewhere new hmm, right and experience these things i'm sure new york People move there and, you know, get cracked like an egg after a mm-hmm. month or two. So do you see how there's layers of stories? Love wins is like that. There's a story going on about me and a guy. I meet him. We date, you know, whatever happens. There's a story about our loved ones we've lost. There's the story of my love with of hip hop and mm-hmm. why I'm, I feel I'm the best and why, I, you know, loving what you do. Yeah. There's so many themes within the theme. And that's how I like to make my albums and EPs like audio movies, literally. Like, yeah, no, that's dope. And and it, it you can you can hear it in the music, you know. Um, Thank you. Uh, so no, that's that's extremely dope. And you've been getting like cosigns and stuff with Black Thought, and you know he likes the album. Like when you see stuff like that, right? Like and being able to be on record with legends like uh, Paul Wall, Planet Asia. Uh, yo, I mean, like, how does that, like, whenever you take a step back, I mean, how does, like, you know, how does that make you feel, man? Especially with somebody like Thought, because that's, that's, that's <laughs> crazy, right? Like, 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 he's not I, even human, you know? I'm gonna be so honest with you. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm gonna tell you something nobody knows. All so, right. like, I promise to God, like, all those times when I receive those messages be on my hardest days. Mm. Mm. it'll be the day i'm ready to just ready to quit it all right jump off a cliff you know even worse than music you know Mm. on some personal shit now i'm gonna get real personal like man what am i doing Mm. or or like man i wish i had this right now Mm -hmm. or why didn't this do this like oh why am i doing this like should i just be a teacher or something like and not that that's bad because I am a teacher, <laughs> but I'm saying <laughs> like obliterating this dream to do another thing. Mm-hmm. And I'll be sad and I'll be crying maybe or whatever. And then I look at my phone and mm-hmm. I see a message from Inspector Deck mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. <laughs> Black Thought. And Crazy. it may like right now it can make me emotional because nobody knows. The, the 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 process of this yeah. it's hard mm-hmm. it's unrelentless it's competitive it's evil mm-hmm. it makes you want to quit if mm-hmm. you're really doing this you will feel all those things i don't care what type of music you're making yeah and so to be very truthful my worst days are when people write either the legends reach out i don't know they have a little Yah meter going on, like, <laughs> don't give up, baby. <laughs> or somebody who is a listener will say something to me like, I mm. was in depression and then I played your song mm. Incredible 30 times. Wow. And that makes me want to cry. Mm. So I feel so fulfilled. Mm. And 
it's not about clout because there's so mm-hmm. many messages I don't post or share. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but it's about the respect. Yeah, could, and some and it's okay for us to now. show our wins sometimes. You know, like it's not yeah. even on uh, it's not even on uh, uh, a cocky type of thing. Is <laughs> the fact that people work hard to do the things yeah. that they're doing, and so sometimes it's all right. I mean, it, I, I don't see nothing wrong with it. I think it's dope. I think it's also inspiring, man. Somebody else might be a, a, a MC or a singer or a producer and and feel like, um, like, what am I doing this for? And then see somebody, you know, online that they know, like, what? Yeah. They didn't inspect it. They didn't reach out? Oh, okay. All right. I'm I, My turn's next. You know, I like, gotta keep going. <laughs> right, right, right. Exactly. You know, because you, the word you said earlier was masters of the craft. Respect from my OGs and lyrical people who I know have started where I've started and turned things down to maintain their artistic integrity Mm, or make sacrifices when those type of people write me I feel like it always happens on my bad days and then Mm. my day gets turned around like I can't explain it like it could be the worst day and then I'll just see something (laughs) like in and it's never some it's never out of vain. Mm-hmm. I know that they listened because these people don't just say things. Yeah. And they're not just signing uh people because how they look or I know where they're coming from because we're and so, and sometimes it's just so genuine, you know, they'll quote a bar or something. Mm. And this is where the difference between the culture and rap music and when it's from the culture, my spirit Mm-hmm. Can, my spirit gets gasolined up in mm. order to keep going because like the internet will have you like up is down and down is up you really have to decipher real love and real support from all these shenanigans so I'd be so honored and then when I meet people like Pete Rock reached out to me and then we ended up on a lineup mm. the same lineup Dope. so when Dope. we met it just it felt like it felt good yeah no that's Mm -hmm. not that's dope i mean these people are actually these people are actual legends that have (laughs) changed the course of history (laughs) you know what i'm saying (laughs) and And then i'm like i said yeah that's dope this is the thing there Mm -hmm. is hours and hours and hours and sacrifice and time and money and uh it's like so those moments mean a lot to mm-hmm. me. Do, and, you, do you think that's yeah. a thing though, where you know people see uh, you getting the recognition now, but they may not understand the grind that it takes to actually get there? Like, do you? Like, <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> I'm a woman, man. You yeah. know, yeah. people think that looks and sex can get you in any room, and that's not true. Like. You know, and also everybody has a different idea of success. You know, mm, mm-hmm. I heard Maya say that just because mm. you would, you know, fuck mad niggas to get a record deal. That's not my idea of success because I'm a literary person. <laughs> like, <my. laughs> And right. also, I always had an open mind to be a ghostwriter. I didn't mm. even want to be in the public eye for like mm. four years. I avoided it. I, mm. I, I tried to just ghostwrite literally so you know yes people think because they think i'm attractive or like but go to my band camp and see that i have 40 albums out yeah, <laughs> like that yeah. has nothing to do with it right or right you don't see you don't see the things i turned down mm. that would have had me already ahead or the times that you're just like what the fuck am i doing like i could just be a regular person but i'm mm. dealing with all these things from the industry and it's not for everybody yeah but i let i make it look easy for a reason (laughs) so if they think it's easy then you know that's cool because i hope it looks easy and then you come try to do it right right (laughs) now i mean i've seen like you know some uh some of your other interviews and other view other interviews with other uh female mcs in the industry and it it it's a 
there's a dark side to how some like how you know some brothers be coming i mean just to be honest right and yes. like whenever whenever you've dealt with those type of situations i, I mean i can only imagine um how disheartening that is right mm -hmm. like like what what's the what kind of goes through your mind in in and because i know it's like i said you know when you're when you're you're, you're trying to make art right and and other people have, you know, I guess nefarious intentions because this yeah, is so what they're used to, put right? Your hand on your thigh. Yeah, that's you wild. Back with something. Right, right, right. That was not the opportunity for that. Right. <laughs> um, well, with me, I'm really crazy. Um, and I usually have my own <laughs> studio. Good, so good, I good. can have the power now you cannot control everybody though so i've mm. definitely been in situations even in my own personal space that made me highly uncomfortable mm -hmm. but this is where women get the she's a bitch um you know can get that reputation but for me like i feel like i display and treat people with what like i should be getting back mm. mm -hmm. so whether i whether whatever the gender age sex orientation i respect you so you have to respect me or i will not be a part of this right no and, absolutely you know and i don't work with people who make me feel uncomfortable or i also got a lot of my own shit i mix and master my own music i mm -hmm. i build relationships that are hip-hop mm -hmm. people like me because my music first so when I stay on that plane of existence, that's what I'm met with. When I use my mind and I display intelligence, then hopefully I, people will match that and, incl and uh, include me. Or And if not, that's not the room for me. Um, and I pray over our community because, like, look at the industry right now. The film industry and the music industry is being gutted out like crazy mm, right now from right. all the curves mm -hmm. so and male and female mm -hmm. so i'm very grateful that i'm in an independent era of online music in that way where i can make a full album in my room yeah and i can control things and we have things like surveillance cameras <laughs> and, and i have a lot of men that love me mm -hmm. that you know they make sure i'm in spaces that are safe again relationship building through all these years so i try to keep myself away from the weird vibes yeah. and i also pray for black people because assault in those things are a problem not just in music yeah oh yeah and not just with girls it's people you know so i am able to see like a bigger picture that's going on and not personalized. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And that's a, that's a great answer. It kind of leads me to what I saw you build on, um, on, uh, Curtis King TV. Uh, I, I watched that interview and, mm -hmm. um, it was, it, you know, in within hip hop now we have, uh, there are MCs that are uh, women MCs that are dope. I mean, lyrically, right? Like yourself, uh, my homie Backwoods Sweetie out of Maryland is dope. We got Rap City out of Raleigh. We got, uh, uh, you know, you did you mentioned No Name on the um, on that podcast. She's dope. Mm -hmm. A lot of a lot of these y'all are y'all are spitters, right? And y'all have topics, and y'all <laughs> have and y'all. I mean, I mean, but. Y'all, y'all do your thing, but it seems like what gets pushed is only one type of MC when it comes to women, right? Totally. And, it, and it's not a, it's not even a thing to where it's like I'm, I'm a conspiracy theorist and I got my tin foil hat on. Like we can see it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, we can, we can look at the billboard. So. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, so when you see that, like you know and that just that idea of because it's like it's like they have a and and you know it's for it 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 definitely uh works for the men as well 
it's just a different type of archetype that they're pushing, right? Like it's totally the, a different typecasting, but it's still typecasting. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And when and whenever you see, but you know, at one t- at one point in the nineties, you know, we we had the we had the players, we had the conscious people, we had the street cats, we had the poets, we had the we had <laughs> the, it was just like all it was, but it was a it created a balance, yeah, that people appreciated, right? Because people are just telling different parts of their story uh, that mm-hmm. make up the black experience in America. Right. And like, and I always look at, I always kind of use this analogy. I, I probably heard it from somewhere else first. So I'm not going to take credit for it, but it's just like, mm-hmm. if, if um, like, like if aliens came down and we, and they, and they listened to hip hop in 2024 <laughs> and they wanted to judge what the state of black people were from like, what would they, what would they think? Right. And like, they would, they right. would and, and so, but whenever you, whenever you peep the game from those lens, those lenses, like what, what comes to your mind? If I had to describe to an alien. <laughs> well, no, not that, not, not that. It's just the uh-huh. analogy, but I'm just saying like, like, like the idea that, only like we like MCs and musicians are being typecasted into one type oh, of baby. The revolution won't be televised. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. See, none of these motherfuckers is lasting longer than two years. These niggas is football careers. They yeah. as if this is a physical sport. Mm. You get two years, you achieve a Grammy, you go on tour, you do the domes, and then we never hear from these people. Mm. Mm. these are not songs we'll be playing at weddings and funerals and enduring you know mental health crisis like a lot of this shit is like like most deaf said he said it sounds like he's shopping <laughs> yeah that's <laughs> <laughs> hey. I love Drake, but mm-hmm. yeah so mm-hmm. so that's not saying i mm-hmm. don't have an opinion on that part but i'm bringing mm-hmm. that up to say like it is we are making party music while the ship is sinking. Absolutely. And so when Mm -hmm. history will reveal with time, Mm -hmm. the truth will reveal too with time. That Mm -hmm. is evident throughout history and not just music. Mm -hmm. They could say what they want about slavery, but we know the truth. Right, right. They can say it never happened. They can say, no, we, you know something? The truth facts are the facts even when ignored okay right right. so i don't really i'm interested i feel like the shit being pushed the world is in despair since covid Mm -hmm. you know i feel it i can feel the times i feel the struggle i see yeah think about it we had covid we had the george floyd brianna taylor uh, 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 assassinations. We had all. We have. We have still to this day, obviously. But all of these things were happening at once, and people are making party records. Like we can't even. Yo, we quarantined. How we not, we can't even party? Yeah. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? That's hilarious. Yeah. You know what I, I didn't even think of that. But yes. So it's like we are living in history, mm. and no matter. The, the the victorious people choose what goes in those books but by keeping our culture our stories we tell what happened and one day one day man i don't want to get crazy i don't want to get now you're good you're me, good <laughs> i'm gonna tell you i'm gonna tell you one more thing that's like mm. besides how i told i shared something with you i'm gonna share one mm. more thing with you I believe the internet will explode one day. Mm. I don't know what exactly how. And the only thing left will be, you know, vinyls, Mm. CDs, Mm -hmm. DVDs. I don't think that whatever we're doing on the internet is sustainable. Oh, it's just, oh no, it's a, um, it's, (laughs) it's, yeah, it's a, it's a cesspool out here, man. Like, (laughs) so let me tell you something. Mm Who's making vinyl right now? Right, right, right. Us. Right. The underground niggas. Facts, facts. Now, it's been more trendy, but Mm. when we talk about the past decade, that is an underground trend that has been surfaced the past couple years Mm. because of COVID, because people Mm. were buying vinyl record players again. Right. Prior to the 
if we look back 10, 15 years, wasn't nobody. I worked in a vinyl store, nigga. I know. Mm, right. It's right. old. It's the same vinyls we're reselling, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's like a crazy theory I have. But I'm just saying, I, I don't, I feel like the truth will always come out. And the aliens will look back and be like, something ain't adding up here. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> but I'm not against party records either, but I think yeah. that the music is a reflection of society mm -hmm. in the degenerate way. And as far as who's controlling black culture right now? Right. I think that's, that is the question. That's the million dollar question, right? And it's like... That's what the history is going to say. Right. Right. Because it ain't adding up. Because, and to the idea, right, that, and I'm not even going to say children because I've seen adults, people are influenced by what happens in pop culture and what happens mm -hmm. in music. And if we only given one type of thing, right, like, it's going to influence people, not just children. It's going to influence people because pop culture is what's popular. What what are we making hot right now? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And this is the imagery that we make it hot. Like everybody's a everybody's a kingpin. You know what I'm saying? Everybody has. Yes. Yeah. Like like come Everyone's on. Everyone's a stripper. <laughs> right. Right. But but these. So here's the thing. We need. People, they're not realizing that people appreciate and respect authentic stories a whole lot more. Like you said, it all comes back around when we started seeing those stats last year about not, I don't think it was a, a no hip hop song was number one, like for the first time, <laughs> yeah, for the first we're time. Not making it. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Exactly. You got our, <laughs> exactly. Like a power plant going on or something. I don't know, but niggas got clones and facts. <laughs> and 10 songwriters, motherfucker. Yeah. Stevie Wonder wrote all that shit dolo. The human They're, mind it's like is a, incredible. No, you're right. It's like a um like a conveyor belt, like this. This ain't a physical team sport, nigga. <laughs> I can write a song myself. Right. You can write a song yourself. Right. And what's more, there are people who can make a beat, write the song, record it, mix and master by themselves. Why are those people not mm. getting? We are making celebrities, not musicians. The so whatever yes. the world will say, it's gonna be an accurate reflection, for better or for worse. But then. So this is why the media is important right now. There is a war for media ownership. What can be streamed? What is called, what is the open world wide web, right? Not having, even us having no restrictions in America, really like that's a very, that's a, a right we have to that, right? Mm -hmm. Platforms like yourself, tiny desk, these things are going to be indicative of the true culture and the true artist so i don't i don't even do a lot of interviews because it's like why would i do this like mm -hmm. i don't like talking to y'all because whatever <laughs> it's not adding up anyway right but this is why tastemakers are going to be another prediction in the next five years look at the and it's already happening look at the streaming kids mm -hmm. can you yeah, can you so, go into that some yeah, I feel like as long as we have these spaces where, like, you, let's say your platform right now, if you don't give up and you continue to grow this for five, ten more years, you will be a voice because we need our own narratives. Right. It's important for Black people in hip-hop culture, regardless of race, to have our own our own awards, mm -hmm. our own platforms, our own write-ups, you know, our own books. Before I even, when I first got to Gold Chain, someone already put me in a book. To me, that meant more than any playlist because mm. you, a book is forever. Right. The internet is not. We don't own these things. I have a, I have a thousand songs in my iTunes. I don't, if, if one day that stops, I, I'm going to have to get to this vinyl player over here. Mm hmm the moment credibility is lost in the media, we have to reshape the media. And now you tell them what's cool. Right. You know? Right. Somebody bring back the Source magazine or something. Like we, right now, we should focus on who is the tastemakers and uplift them, I think, and 
the tastemakers stop being so bought out all the time because you yeah. guys are ruining your, especially in the underground. Like, bro, mm-hmm. the fuck, like it ain't. It really is no need to mess that up, you know. But the media is just as important as the music and the platforms and the apps that will be created in order to take back our narrative. Because if if I had a daughter and she was looking on TV right now, woo, right, right, that's woo. a lot. That's a lot. That's some woo. social. That's some serious social engineering right there. Come on, so. I think the key is to continue in the free market of internet tech and creating and survey, uh, saving our libraries, saving our, our physical things that mm-hmm. exist because the internet does not exist. Mm. And in 10 years or 20 years, when this shit all explodes, it's going to be whoever kept the stories. Hmm, right, 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 right. I promise you that much. It ain't gonna be about streaming. It's gonna be about where are the CDs. Mm. Where's the flyers that you had a show? Like, yeah. where's the internet doesn't exist. You know, it's funny that you say that because, like, I got my records and CDs over there, and I got my books. I don't really do PDFs or nothing because I like. <laughs> I'm like. <laughs> Hey, one day, man, I don't know. I might not have access to this stuff on the internet, right? Like, I, come I, on, I, come I need, on. I need, I need my stuff, man. Um, there's a whole bookshelf right here. I, right. I'm with you, and I embrace technology, so I'm not on Me some too. like doomsday shit. But I'm, I'm just simply saying that I'm a history person, so like, history repeats itself, and we are imploding right now, and the internet market is like crazy right now there's some countries that don't have wi-fi there's some countries that have it but they can only go on so many types of internet um places there are some places where they have internet packages they were trying to do that here and americans is like fuck you yeah, right. or you can almost like cable tv well buy the social media package <laughs> no nigga we want the world wide motherfucking web mm-hmm so and you I... see that there's some, I'm not going to say no names because they they like the shadow ban whenever you mention certain things, but mm-hmm. uh, there's some there's some wars going on where the aggressor has been cutting off the internet of the people that they are, you know, uh, killing. And yes. that and goes to show that there's a narrative. Exactly. Right. And that just go, leads credence to the idea that even something that we take as as uh you know like the internet's going to be there type of thing it's not that's not the it's not even like five or ten years from now that's not the reality for everybody that is living right now today you know what no. i mean <clears throat> depending and we on have, what's we happening americans have to care about our freedom of speech and protecting these things and you know those kids that used to hack like crazy mm-hmm. the anonymous niggas mm-hmm. and a lot of them they put them in 50 year sentences they are in their young 20s they doing not even white collar level crime right like right. but to me that shows how important these freedoms are if this little 21 year old hacker <laughs> got 50 years oh yeah and it's niggas making murders that <laughs> ooh, like right <laughs> you gotta wake up right oh yeah absolutely absolutely all right so y'all the last thing i wanted to ask you um Last week, I saw in the news about uh, Sony uh, getting uh, Michael Jackson's um, uh, masters back. And then I I went, I was going, I don't know how I ended up on my algorithm, but I was just kind of going through like YouTube shorts or whatever. And a lot of interviews from Prince came up. And I think one was at uh, some award show where he was, uh, you know, talking about how he puts in all of this work to make his albums, to make his music, all this creative energy, the touring, everything, and the labels getting eighty percent of that, right? And you know, we all, we all know Prince's fight with the major labels. Um, we mm-hmm. all know Michael uh, Michael Jordan's idea of of uh, owning his masters and being liberated from uh, Sony and 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 all of that. And and so just like, but 
whenever we look at um, how these labels and the, I'm not talking about indie art, indie labels, right? I'm talking about yeah. the, the big, Amazing. the big, mm -hmm. and so when we look at how they are able to control the culture, profit off of the culture, exploit the culture with, and all of these talented artists, right, that we have loved, whenever you, whenever we watch these movies, like whether it's like a, the, a movie about the Temptations or a movie about some, some <laughs> artist or group in the 70s, 80s or 60s, like they never got paid, right? And artists yeah. and artists are still going through that now like whenever we just think about this idea that somebody in a suit is controlling the culture the way they the way they do with all of these creative young minds that are making amazing music not getting paid for, not getting paid for it like i mean just that whole relationship is is crazy and exploitative but just the whenever you think about that like like what like what are your thoughts on just the idea between uh, the whether well, the relationship between artists and major label whether you're a legend or or, or just somebody you know that's newly signed mm -hmm. there's a level of exploitation that's going on somewhere right right well a lot of the older artists Streaming didn't exist yet, mm -hmm. so I think a lot of their contracts were dated and, you know, they were made before the internet. Right. So I would say I'm not fully, I'm a little bit ignorant as to Prince's contract, but overall, when you compare the OGs, they couldn't help it because they didn't have the internet. And the process of making music was a very expensive hobby limited mm. to few. Just mm -hmm. how making movies is right now. There are Black people kept out, but mostly it's an expense, expensive artistic expression. So back then, music was more like that. You had to pay, you know, you recorded on tapes that ran out and mm -hmm. nobody just had home studios and someone had to get you on the radio. There were no playlists, right? So I feel like Prince's frustration like it's a different it's the same battle different weapons yeah i guess yeah. like the newer artists we're getting pimped out of our streams mm. which makes people want to sign mm, right if i if i spent my own money into my album and i just want to make it back i'm not even able to do that because the streams are a piece of a penny Right, that's crazy. So as revolutionary as I may want to be, the reality is I have to pay for things and I have to pay for my hobby and my life. So mm -hmm. I think that the frustrations are similar, but the, 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 the demon is different. And um, the best thing to do in America right now is to have a business. Mm. Whether this is what's going to happen when the ship sinks too again not my doomsday talk but i'm just saying <laughs> you asked me so like nah, we good we, we have those doomsday conversations over here so we good <laughs> <laughs> yeah like we need to all have businesses mm -hmm. and the key right now mm -hmm. is where there's chaos there is wealth if we can create llc's create our own spaces and be looked at as a partnership that seems to be the best type of deal to get right now if you don't want to be fully indie because not every artist is is an is an artist like they want to fucking make music and that's it and yeah. why should we why should we care why should we force them to do their own accounting if, and do all these things if that's not what they they want to do you don't make the footballers take their own stats and stat books mm. so like i get it <laughs> I, I like making album art. I like mixing and mastering. I like those things. But if I'm just a singer, why do I have to do those? Right. So I think right now in the future, as far as my generation is, to have an LLC and build an organic following. That way, when if you get tired or you're ready for a partner, it's a partnership and not a deal necessarily. Similar to these conversations Russ has been having a lot recently. 
he's a great person to what are those conversations you know. because i know he i know he kind of killed the game for a minute right like like yeah <laughs> well you know he's an advocate of independence and mm -hmm. he's somebody who's floated in the industry with and without deals mm -hmm. but the key is to make the deals work for you just like shark tank mm. i think that we have to start looking at music as unfortunately back recorded music is a new thing that's not that old right it's not that old Bef before music was on a phonograph or whatever or these mm -hmm. things you had to go watch a person sing Absolutely. That's how you're getting your music. Yeah, yeah. With the invention of records, which is yeah. not that old. So, right. like, we are all adjusting. And then now you've got this extra millennial generation with the internet mm. complicating it further. Mm -hmm. Well, this, the, no matter what changes, the fact remains to me of ownership and, L, and um, having a business. Because that's the American way, no matter what you're trying to do. Right. So maybe that applies to musicians. Doesn't matter. You can be in a good deal mm -hmm. and you can be a terrible independent artist. <laughs> like but you can have the, the opposite. People complain about that, but it's like you got to do good business. Yeah. Yeah. Whether you're old, young, streaming, band camp, vinyl only, make a business for yourself and then execute that in hold on to whatever those business morals and musical morals or whatever, you know, your standards and, and then God will work that out for you or your team will build for yeah. the things you can't do. I think the industry is definitely exploited. Yeah, ab absolutely. And I, I agree with that a hundred percent. And we'll leave on this note that, that makes it important for people. And I'm telling everybody that's watching especially is the artists that you like make sure you buying the vinyls make sure you're buying yes. the merch make sure you're buying the cassette tapes like y'all niggas put 25 30 dollars 50 dollars on the eight <laughs> facts facts you could buy you could buy a record McDonald's? and you don't have to have a record player to buy the record right you could put it on the wall you could put it on your bookshelf you could put you whatever like whatever but you it's definitely important to support uh, indie artists that way because uh, streams are are like this pretty much non-existence you know what I'm saying you're not gonna Man. <laughs> and stop complaining about everything just do <laughs> the work stop right. complaining about Sexy Red when you didn't even fucking buy Rhapsody's album mm. stop complaining about Ice Spice when you don't stream my music and mm. I like both of them but I'm mm. just saying like you niggas are starting to be, re be redundant I'm tired of seeing people on YouTube, let's talk about how female rap is ruining life. Well, let's talk about how you niggas are buying it mm. or whatever, right? So, like, let's put the let's put the power back in the consumer's hands. At the end of the day, if I don't buy it, I'm not consuming it, right? So let's take like I feel like people need to take control of black black spaces, black narratives, and hip hop culture, and people will be surprised at how we could come out on top. And also, networking outside of America is meh. It's so important outside of your state, outside of your, that's the point of the internet. People get on there and follow everyone from high school. Mm -hmm. The niggas that live next door to you. What did, it's called the World Wide <laughs> Web. Right. So we can create our world and it doesn't have to be what's on the billboard. It can be whatever beautiful things you want in your ears and around your, you know, how you have your man cave I see. Yeah. Like, you can go find these things now. It's a little work, but there's no excuse. And you can't blame rappers for the downfall of society. You're nah, society. Nah, We're nah. society. <laughs> Absolutely. And so, so, yeah, no, nah, no, nah, I, I definitely agree with that. That's a reflection. It's just, it's a reflection of <laughs> what we, what's happening out in the world. Um, yeah. um, but Yara, man, it's been, um, a dope conversation. Um, you're making great music. You're making a lot of great moves. Uh, Thank you. And we, we salute, uh, the success you have now and the, and the even greater success that you're going to have in the future. So we definitely appreciate you for coming through and we definitely going to have you back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, uh, yeah, no doubt. And so, but again, thank you for coming through. 
thanks for having me, man. I hope this channel blows the fuck up like crazy. Y'all heard it. Y'all heard it. Yeah, I'll be back. <laughs> I'll come back anytime. So no doubt, no doubt. That's dope. And um, I'm gonna make sure all the links are in the description. But um, you have a great evening and peace to the queen. Likewise. Bye. Peace.